Hello, and welcome back to the inn. I understand it's been a while, but hey, welcome back, if anything. It's Eddie and Bubba, and we're really gonna talk about this new expansion. Ah, oh, Eddie, I want to play some D and D, or K and K, or K and C, KFC. Yes. Let's get some chicken. Kobolds and Catacombs is the new Hearthstone expansion. If anything, we're definitely looking forward to it. So there's a lot to really kind of chew over for Bob. For me, it's gumming it over, but <laughs> different story entirely for that one. But let's dig into this. I'm going to start this off with Marin the Fox. Now, if you logged in on Monday, at least... You'd have gotten this card for free. He's an 8 cost, 6-6 six, six, battle cry. Summon a 0-8 treasure chest for your opponent. Break it for awesome loot. Now the treasures inside of it are all 3 costs. So I'll go ahead and explain those just real quickly. To start off, it's Tolan's Goblet. You draw a card, you fill your hand with copies of it. Wondrous Wand, you draw three cards and you reduce their cost to zero. Zarag's Crown, discover a legendary minion, summon two copies of it. And then the Golden Kobold, the three cost, six six taunt, battle cry, replace your hand with legendary minions. Alright, so he's been in the meta for about two days now. I've personally not been able to get in to get some games to be able to play and see how Mare and the Fox works. I know, if anything, Brian Kibler's been playing around with it. He's got a deck with it, and it looks pretty interesting and pretty fun. I know people have already started also thinking about OTKs with him, and it's just like, <sighs> we're already going down this road. Okay, fine, whatever, it's no big deal to me, but just going to glare and just go, okay. But... I take a look at Marin the Fox going forward. I don't know because of, like, we've only seen a few cards with kobolds and catacombs of exactly what we're going to be able to equip as far as Marin the Fox goes. But I do personally like some of the treasures that he does hold. Like... The Wondrous Wand, drawing three cards and reducing their cost to zero. If anything, for me, when I look at it, I see that as something that's really great for Quest Mage, because it's just like, oh, hey, look, I can potentially get my Archmage Antonidias for free on board? Hells to the yeah, I'll drop on that. Uh, Tolan's Goblet... Another one of those quest mage cards that, you know, you look at and if you draw Sorcerer's Apprentice, hey, boom, a handful of it. It's a little bit tricky as well because you're also thinking about hand management. So you really got to also balance it out. Uh, Zarog's Crown has a little bit of too much RNG for me because it's like, oh, hey, look, I get to summon two copies of this legendary minion. Maybe once stuff rotates out from the previous year, and we get to see, like, stuff from just this set and the past two sets of Journey to Angoro and Knights of the Frozen Throne, as well as next year's set, it may be a better overall card. And then, of course, Golden Kobold falling into the Golden Monkey style of things. It's just, instead of replacing your deck with legendaries, you're getting your hand replaced with legendaries. It's one of those, okay, I get a really powerful 3-cost 6-6 six, six taunt. That's really nice for 3. So it's just, hmm. I like Marin. Because, I mean, it's a new 8 cost you get to kind of toy and play around with. And if anything, like I said, his treasures are something you have to think about and figure out to play around. You want to make sure you bust that chest open as soon as possible, so that way your opponent also doesn't capitalize on it being on their side of the board. And them going, ha-ha! 
or, you know, them passing it to you through betrayal or something like that. So, if anything, I'm going to throw it to Bulb so I don't sound as rambly, but Bulb, go ahead. Um, it should be noted that for the Master Chest, which is the chest that is put on your opponent's side of the field, that's Death Rattle is give your opponent a fantastic treasure, not give whoever breaks this chest a fantastic treasure. That that yep. needs to be said right off the bat. So even yep. if your opponent does break it, you're still going to get the treasure. Um, and a lot of the cards that you get from the treasure are, you know, they are nice, and they can be powerful, I think, in the right decks and the right situations. But, right now it's getting played around a lot, and I've, I have kind of watched some of the meta stuff, but this is just a card that everybody's just playing around with, but it's a card that... I My gut says that in the long run, I, except for maybe a few select decks, I, I just don't think that it's going to continue to just stay in the meta. I think it'll be a niche card. I think maybe something like Miracle Rogue might use it. This might be a good thing to potentially... Like, if you want to replace um, Auctioneer or something, or if you want just just some, you know, some extra stuff to do, Mare and the Fox might be some, something, you, something you want. I'm not sure. Eddie kept on talking about Quest Mage. I'm not sure you put in the Quest Mage, just to be honest. Um, maybe Control Warrior puts it into, into their deck, maybe looking for Golden Catacomb. But in general, I think that... This is probably going to be a minion that is going to be around as people kind of experiment with it, but I think it's going to be, it's kind of just going to fade uh, out of popularity. Uh, so I don't think it's going to stick around. In I don't, I don't think it's going to be st it's going to stick around and be as popular in the long run. I think there'll be a few select decks or niche decks that use it, but I think in general this is going to be this is a card that people are just playing with. And then they'll just for, they'll just forget about it or won't deem it as worth it in the long run, mainly because I think of the chest. Um, I I think for for people in the long run they just I think people are going to have a hard time really seeing this as a good value based card, uh, and I think that most decks will just stop playing it after a while. So next up, one of the things that's being introduced in, Go in Kobolds and Co Catacombs are um, legendary weapons. And each class is going to get a legendary weapon. Um, and they're going to be different. Right now we've seen some from the spellcasting classes that have zero attack and three durability. Um, and the first one is Dragon Soul. It's the priest legendary weapon. It's a three cost, zero, three. With the effect, after you cast three spells in a turn, summon a five, five dragon. Now I had some questions. I had some concerns about uh, whether the effect removes durability or not, and I, I just did some checking into it, and it was confirmed at BlizzCon that no, the effect does not decrease durability. So unless you find some way to attack with it, or unless your opponent destroys the weapon, this weapon's probably going to be up, going to be up for the long term. Uh, this is going to make uh, certain tech cards like the Oozes or um, Harrison Jones good, but in general, that means that if you have a zero-cost weapon and it says it does not get rid of durability, it does not get rid of durability once you use the effect. Um, in general, I think like uh, the Lyra Priest decks might 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 uh, use it, like the Miracle Priest type decks uh, might find some use out of this. Um, also, I think that Razakis Priest might be able to get some use out of this weapon. Other than that, though, I can't really think of a lot of priest decks that are go that's really going to benefit from this deck. The big w question, of course, is well, what about dragon priest? Well, dragon priest in general, um, they're really focusing on some more of the control type spells, and generally, you are not casting a lot of those spells in a turn because dragon decks, the dragon priest decks, are actually very strong mid range decks. And because you're not going to be casting a lot of spells in turn, you're really not going to benefit from this weapon to really summon 5-5 five, five dragons. So, while I think it will work in, like, in a Miracle Priest deck with like Lyra or something like that, or in, in a Razakis build, I don't think it will work in a mid-range or a Dragon Priest build.
Is that everything you got there, Bull? Yes. Alrighty. I can... Oh, man. Because, like, also... I read something, but I'm not going to think about it, because I thought that may be also uh, as far as the whole weaponary thing goes. I think they're also changing, like, a Tesh... And, uh, other weapons as well to kind of match up with Dragon Souls. And all these other weapons that are, uh... I haven't heard anything about them changing uh, Atiesh's ability. But yeah. other, other than that, the, uh, the, it's right there in the fact that it, that using it in that way uses, uh, up durability. Yeah, that's why I'm just like, I'm not really going to think about it, or at least, you know, kind of sort of take it into consideration when I do it. So it's just like, all right, take a step back, let's just focus on Dragon Soul, because it's, of course, one of the nine weapon legendaries we're going to see. So it's just like, all right, as a card, three cost. You're already really hotly contested as far as your three cost slot goes in Priest. Not going to lie. It's a strong slot. You've got your Shadow Ward Death. You've got your... Chemist? No, Courier. One of the two of those. Or both, maybe. Eh, who knows. Uh, that hit that slot. You've also got the 3-4 that gives your minion plus 3 health. And it's just like... You're going to look at this and you got to go, okay, i got to cast three spells. So, yeah, sure, you can go off like crazy with Lyra and potentially summon a 5-5 five, five dragon, or at least summon 5-5 five, five dragons. But at the same time, you got to make sure you have all of this set up to go into motion. And given the fact that you also have all these tech cards. You've got your Acidic Swamp Ooze that's going to go ahead and just kill it. You have your Harrison Jones that'll just kill it. It's one of those things where it's like, do I really want to play this one? Or any of the other weapons that'll be here when they come out? So... Like, I'm, like, I'm on the same side as Bob here, that we're going to be looking at a high end of Ooze and Harrison Jones as techs right at the very start, because people are going to experiment with what they get. So, that's where I'll agree with him on. Now, and you're guaranteed a weapon uh, once yeah. the set launches. Yeah, so it's like, you know, woohoo, free stuff. So you can experiment with you get. Now, that's not to say if anything, when it comes to Dragon Soul as a whole, I can see it, again, of course, early on getting experimental play, but as we get deeper in, we may see it fall by the wayside because of the whole because of having to have Lyra to be able to set up and go off with it. Or you would have to be like okay, I'm going to play Dragon Soul and then I'm going to go hopefully having two uh, Radiant Elementals on the board and then just go Shadow Visions and the Shadow Visions and the Shadow Visions and it's just like, uh, no. Or, you know, Silence. Whatever it has to take to be able to make sure you cast three spells in a turn to summon the 5-5 five, five dragon. But, yeah, I've rambled enough, if anything. I'm going to scoot over to Crushing Walls. Seven cost, Hunter Epic. Destroy your opponent's left and rightmost minions. I be on this one because it's just like I look at it and I'm like this isn't Hunter's like really this isn't Hunter's thing Hunter is the 
at least to me, the aggro, go face, and just, you know, beat my opponent down through board. So it's just like, now you're trying to potentially turn it in a whole new direction. What are you doing? I mean, being able to destroy my opponent's left and rightmost minions, that makes it to where it gives a whole new, whole new and whole other layer of hand tracking, which is an entirely different skill that I'm not even going to get into right now. And of course, it gets rid of two minions in my opponent's hand. So it gets rid of resources. It, it's not. It's not their hands on the board. Pardon me. Pardon me. And I am... Thank you for correcting me. Thank you entirely. So to back up now on that... Uh, don't flood your board. <laughs> or at least, now you know positioning. Or at least have to learn positioning better. I... You know what? Just uh, at that point, because now I look like an idiot, I'm just throwing it to bulb. I I like because Hunter is a class that has that has some problems controlling the board as far as with spells or whatnot. They're more about using weapons, uh, although not really as much as like warrior, but mainly like minions. And Hunter's more about the minion minion based uh, play style and then attacking and putting pressure on your opponent. So on one hand, it's nice to give them more control spell options. But on the other hand, this is a 7-cost spell. And even in your more mid-range hunters, I'm gonna, I have a hard time seeing them playing a spell that costs this much. Um, like, I could see Call of the Wild, because that's a finisher. <clears throat> but Crushing Walls, at that point, hunters are just going to want to play... Cheaper, more cheaper spells that that control maybe take care of one or two or three minions, uh, not ones where they have to worry about positioning and whatnot. And I think that, as really interesting as the spell is, I think it costs way too much for a hunter deck, and that's why I really don't think it's going to see any play. I can agree there because of the high end cost. Yeah, I think yeah. if it, I think if it costs like maybe five, it might see some play. But I think costing seven is a bit too much to ask for a hunter. Even as much as Ben Brode wants Control Hunter to be a thing, I don't think there's incentive right now to really have a Control Hunter deck, and I don't think there's even the mid-range Hunter decks, you know, they might experiment with this, but I don't think they're going to really consider this in the long run. I think they're going to just focus on the tried-and-true methods of getting rid of opponent's min minions or just uh, pressuring face, and uh, it's an interesting idea. I like the concept. I just don't think it's going to work. So, another new addition being, uh, another new mechanic uh, being introduced into Kobolds and Catacombs is Recruit. It's a new keyword. Uh, we've kind of seen the, this type of effect before. Basically, what Recruit does um, is it pretty much takes a minion from your deck and summons it directly to the field. Uh, so, it's not going to activate Battlecry effects or anything like that. It's just a direct summon to the field. You're not playing it from your hand or anything like that. And some cards, you know, sometimes it'll just be recruiting a general minion. But then sometimes the recruit uh, requirements will be a requirement for a you know for a specific type of minion. So you're gonna have to keep that in mind if you're gonna use these mechanics. To illustrate that, they introduced Gather Your Party, which is a six-cost warrior spell, which just says recruit a minion, and that's nice. It's just blind recruit a minion. Uh, again, my problem number one six cost. I understand why it's a six-cost uh, spell because you're pulling out potentially any, min any minion out of the deck. But again, that's expensive. But I think in some decks, you could make it work. But here's the thing. It's a warrior spell. And as of right now, I can't think of a warrior deck that would really want to make use of this. Um, if you're playing Taunt Warrior, I think you want to be playing them out of your hand because you want to... Uh, finish your quest, but Taunt Warrior's kind of gone out of vogue since uh, Journey to Angor, uh, since uh, Frozen Throne. Um, other than that, unless you're playing something like Pirate Warrior, uh, you're playing some sort of Control Warrior. And if you're playing Control Warrior, you do not want to grab a minion 
out of your deck and plop it on the field because the minions are your resources to do some really interesting things, mainly control the board. So I'm really not... Basically, what I'm saying, it's not mainly a minion-focused deck, it's more control-focused deck, and so gather your party is not really useful in that type of deck. And let's look at the other hand, the big minion-based warrior deck is Pirate Warrior. And and that cha that uh and for that that's an aggro deck, and you don't want a six cost spell clogging up your aggro deck, because if you if you are in a bad position by turn six in that deck, uh, gather your party is not going to help you. So, and I'm trying to even think of warrior decks from the past. I mean, maybe something like Patron, maybe could have used it, but I think that there are other things that Warrior was more interested in. And maybe I don't think soon Warrior would have wanted to use it. Uh, I'm not sh entirely sure Dragon Warrior. Maybe Dragon Warrior would have wanted to use it, but even then, I'm not entirely sure about that. So I'm really ha unless they're going to introduce a new archetype of Warrior, I'm really having a hard time seeing where Gather Your Party fits in Warrior's toolkit. I just I can't think of a deck where this works, and I don't see any evidence um, in past expansions and in what they've given Warrior in the past, to really make me think that Gather Your Party is something that Warrior will be interested in. I'm, maybe I'll be wrong. Maybe the rest of the Warrior cards that we get from this expansion will push a very minion-heavy heavy control, uh, minion-heavy Warrior playstyle, but we just haven't seen that from Warrior. And until we see that, Gather Your Party just isn't going to work. Are you good? Yeah. Because if anything, I already see a deck where this is probably going to be fitting in. And we call it the Big Easy. <laughs> as soon as I saw it, and like, you saw it come out, and I mean, it was like, okay, this recruit has been, it, it's explained. One of the first things that just went out with everybody was big easy warrior easy and it's just like yeah because also you can also you think sudden genesis as well because if i remember correctly sudden genesis is the two cost spell from warrior that summons damaged copies yeah i'm not sure if it costs two though Future Eddie, you will correct me on this, if anything, but, I mean, just six cost bink. Let me see if I can't grab one of my big taunt creatures that I know is deep in the deck, or at least one of my big creatures that's in the deck, and just kind of put it as a threat on the board. I'll take it. And like I said, big easy, warrior easy. You know it's gonna be a thing, man. You know it's gonna be. Hey, everyone likes big decks. And they cannot <laughs> lie. If anything, we've already got Big Priest, we've got Big Druid, now we got potentially Big Warrior getting a bigger tool in its kit. I welcome I welcome it. I welcome it. I'm gonna move on to Aluneth. This is the mage legendary weapon. Six cost. At the end of your turn, draw three cards. Busted. Like, you literally have to make sure you have, or you top deck, your ooze, or your Harrison, to be able to knock this off. I'm going to be the guy that goes out on a limb and says it right now, because I know Mage. Mage loves having resources in hand. If anything, this is something that I could see definitively Quest Mage running, because it's just like, I get to my win con faster. So, for me, calling it now, Meta Definer. Just going to call it now. Well, I'm going to call it overrated. 
and here's why. You're drawing a card at the beginning of your turn. With Alanith, you're drawing three cards at the end of your turn. Now, the mage deck I can the mage the type of mage decks I can see really using this are tempo mage decks. The one where you're pretty much looking to burn your opponent and you're play, playing to play on tempo. I think those decks could make really good use of Alanith. What you're thinking, and a lot of people are thinking, are hey, combo decks can use Alanith. The problem is that combo decks like to draw, yes, but you're talking about, we're talking about four cards a turn. And combo decks are really big on holding on to cards. And normally you need to hold on to a lot of cards in your hand. You are drawing about four cards a turn. You are more likely to burn your win condition with Aluneth than you are to get it in your hand and to play it. Because you have no idea where in your deck that win condition is. Not only that, you are probably also playing many other cards, many other cards and minions that are meant to get you cards in your hand. Which means Aluneth is even more likely to make you burn cards. So, unless you can get your win condition very quickly, chances are what you're actually going to do is you are going to burn any chance that you're going to have in these combo decks to actually win the game. So I think people are going to try it in the combo decks, but I think what they're going to find is that Aluneth is going to co end up costing them the games more times than it will have them win the games. So I think that this deck is good for, like, tempo-style mage decks, but it's going to be very bad for control or uh, combo-style mage decks because, again, they want the resources, but by wanting resources in your hand, that means you have to keep them in your hand, and Aluneth is just going to keep on adding cards in your hand, causing you to potentially burn your win con. So I think, I'm going to call this, you call it meta fighting, I call it overrated. I think this is going to cost people way way too many games and then win them and it's going to go out it's going to pretty much fade quickly out of favor for those combo decks and for those control decks because they're going to realize Aluneth is just not going to be worth it they would rather stick with the tried and true methods of getting cards in their hands and controlling that rather than not being able to control three cards constantly getting to their hand and four cards in your hand a turn and especially in something like quest mage where you need to be generating uh generating spells that you didn't have and then playing those, and you're going to have stuff like, uh, like the, you're going to have, uh, like the, the Tome, which is going to generate you more spells, and this is giving you more cards, I just don't think it's going to work out in the long run. I think this is a disaster waiting to happen for those combo decks. I think it's just going to make them lose games. So I think Aluneth is going to quickly fade out of favor. I think Dragon Soul has a better chance of being meta-defining than Aluneth, mainly oh. because of the four-card draw. I was about to say, oh, I highly disagree on that part. Okay, I'm, I'm just going to say, I want you to do the math. I, I can do the math. How quickly can your combo deck get rid of cards to just keep your win con? And how many cards do you need for your win con? You're going to burn cards. That part I can agree with. And the problem is, more times often than not, you're probably going to burn your win condition. I'm not sure on that one, because it's mainly at the end of your turns. So you get a chance to be able to plan ahead. At yeah, you get well, at least one spot to be able to okay. plan ahead. Well, let's think about the, the mage combo decks that exist right now. We're looking at stuff like, for, basically, these are your templates for the combo decks that exist in general, and mainly in mage. You have freeze mage, and you have uh, the various quest mage mages. Um, freeze mage is all about getting the right combination of cards in your deck, mainly get to Alexstrasza and then just burn them out. Uh, you need to be holding on to cards. Um, I think Freeze Mage might make use of this, because they can just put, throw out free spells every once in a while and put out minions. But still, at some point, they're going to be holding on to a lot of cards. And again, they're going to have minions that make them... that Minions and also stuff like Arcane Intellect to make them draw cards as well. So we're not talking about them just drawing four cards a turn. They might be drawing other cards a turn, especially if their opponent is paying attention. Um, and then you have Quest Mage. Quest Mage is more likely than something like Freeze Mage to hold on to cards in their hand because they try to get all their ducks in the row for a long time. And that is, and I, I've, I've looked at at Freeze Ma at uh, Quest Mage type decks before. That's a lot of cards you need to keep in your hand. Alaneth is more likely to burn your win condition in something like Freeze, in something like Quest Mage than it is in something like Freeze Mage. Freeze Mage might be able to find a way to turn the corner. I think Quest Mage, once it burns you out, you're probably done. And it's going to burn you out. Um, unless Quest Mage starts playing more tempo, 
or unless these combo decks, uh, in order to in order to use Alneth, get rid of uh, get rid of their other card draw engines, there's no way this is going to work in a combo deck. Now, see the reason another another kind of reason why I can just kind of point to it being a meta definer is because of the fact of if your opponent leaves this up, yeah, sure, you're gonna you're going on the draw and you're gonna burn yourself out side of the argument. Your opponent's not gonna want to let you draw and get resources. Oh, at I. Oh. I can agree with that, but there's not going to be a lot of time, but you're also depending on, you're also thinking that their opponent is going to have something immediately to take care of the problem. And yes, they could, they're probably going to be taking in weapon removal, but mm -hmm. you're, you're falling into the fallacy of this card is not, uh, we're falling into, play, it used to be on the play style of this card won't see play, like Vicious Legendly won't see play, because there are, this gets rid of it, this gets rid of it, this gets rid of it. The fallacy being that your opponent has what they need in hand at the time. You are you are essentially falling into the same fallacy. Only this time you're saying it's meta defining, uh, because of that reason. Again, if your opponent if your opponent has it in hand, it gets it get, gets rid of that. You got some use out of it, and it helped you. But let's say your opponent either doesn't pack weapon removal, or has um, just not drawn it. Yeah, you might get the, you might get your win con, but you more likely are probably going to fill your hand up and start burning cards. And by the time you start burning cards, your opponent's probably just going to let you continue burning cards. So, unless you hit that miracle game of you play it, you get your three cards at the end, and your opponent happens to destroy it, with Harrison Jones allowing them to draw their three cards, chances are you might get one or two, two turns uh, out, of, out of it being really helpful, and then unless you've drawn your win con, you are screwed. I'm, if anything, I, I hear your points, and I see your points definitively, don't get me wrong, I'm still going to be the guy that stands beside it, like I did with Shares and Corpse Flower, and be like, dunk, here's my flag, this one says meta-defining, ha ha yeah. And I'm going to stick my flags uh, up for the same reason, I'm just going to say, I think this one's overrated. I, I yeah. think there's a lot of people who are going, with your line of thought, going, this is meta-defining, and this is going to be in combo decks, and I'm just going to look at it going... Yeah, there's a few problems I see with it, and I don't think it's as good as you think it is. Uh, I think it works very well in a card that can get rid of the resources, it gets rid of the cards that it generates quickly. So, in a tempo and a burn style mage deck, where you're just trying to, when you're sp where you're spending resources every turn, this is incredible. In a deck where you are hoarding resources, I think this is a disaster waiting to happen. And I think that there's going to be a lot of players who will discover that. Hmm. If anything, it may give also, like, just as a final point, it may also make it to where something like Mana Bind will come into play and be in the meta for uh, the quest mage because of, hey, look, zero cost. Dunk, play for free. Exactly. I'm going to get my hand a little bit. It, it, so it's just like, it, it gives you more to play with. It really does. So it's just like, yeah, I'm... I'm highly interested in seeing where Aluneth falls. Like I said, I th you know, if, if they get rid of their other card draw engines, maybe. But I don't think they're going to get rid of... The, I, don't, I don't think they're going to get rid of their other card draw engines. I think they're going to keep those card draw engines and then add this on top of it, and then they're going to end up in a mess. Because then, in order to free up room, they're going to have to put their other card draw engines on the field. And then they just draw more cards and create more of a mess. So I just think this is a mess waiting to happen. We'll see, because we've still got a full expansion to go to see what could happen, and at least what's going to come out from Mage. That is true, and that's why I said I think Tempo and Bur the Burn ma Mage has the advantage here. Okay, um, so another type of card they introduced were the Unidentified cards. They said there's going to be three of them in this expansion. They revealed one, which is for Priest, the Unidentified Elixir. Now, what these do is you have a general effect that you know it does. And then there are several different bonus effects, several different types of things that it can turn into, and you don't know which one you're going to get until you draw the card. So what they what they introduced was the priest uh, was the priest uh, unidentified card, which is an unidentified elixir. It's a three cost spell that gives a minion plus two plus two, and then it has various different bonus effects. There are four different effects you can get. There's the elixir of hope, which also gives the minion. Death Rattle, return this minion to your hand. 
There's the elixir of life, which gives it life steal. There's the elixir of purity, which gives it the divi- gives it divine shield. And then there's the elixir of shadows, which summons a one one copy of that minion. So number one, you aren't playing this blind and hope and then wondering what you're going to get. You draw this into your hand and then you know what you have. So you can do. There is some amount of planning that you can do with these. As for an, an identified elixir, I think this would work in a minion heavy priest deck. Uh, mainly the uh, the zoo type tempo priest decks we saw, uh, kind of trying to rise uh, to rise in the last expansion, but really didn't get their feet wet enough. I think this could give them an edge. Those very strong those those minion heavy priest decks. We don't see a lot of them because a lot of the priest decks are very control heavy, are very spell heavy. Um. And I think played in the right way, this could be very good. But I think you need more than just this card to make it worthwhile. And until Priest gets into a spot where they can go for those minion-heavy decks again, uh, you're probably not going to see this a lot. Um, maybe a mid-range uh, deck uh, or a zoo-type Priest deck, but um, I don't think this is going to be in a lot of Priest decks. Maybe Dragon Priest. Maybe Dragon Priest, I think, could use it. Um, but again... A lot of these minion-heavy, mini, minion-based priest decks really aren't common in the meta right now. It has that same problem that I really did complain about just a little bit ago with the weapon of priest. It's a three cost. And it's one of those things where it's just like, I really want to like the unidentified elixir because it's just like, you look fun! But at the same time, I'm just like, man, why do you gotta be three? Because you just go into that spot. And I'm just, I'm frustrated and annoyed with it. Because it's just like, hmm. But, I mean, I do agree with you on the fact of, like, you know, this will have to find play in the minion heavy style of a priest deck or at least like a mid-range priest deck and it's just like do you play it or do you make it to where you just say screw it and you go all right we're just gonna play highlander and just make it to where you throw in your highlander deck and just go wiggity woo how about you I mean, well, do you think this will potentially get some love in the Highlander deck, in both Standard and Wild? In the Highlander deck, um, it depends which Highlander deck. Uh, the specific Highlander decks we're seeing now, I really don't think so, because Priest, it seems that the, that the Priest decks, the Priest Highlander decks that we're really seeing in uh, Standard are more focused on spells than they are on minions. Uh, that's actually one thing that, that uh, whenever you're watching playback when people and uh, players uh, streamers are talking about their their choices when they see it's a Highlander priest deck gen- generally they're not thinking about having to deal with minions hitting the board they're more worried about of course the spells so I don't think as far as the Highlander priest decks that we really see that it's going to have it's going to find much of a home there are versions of Highlander I, d- I do run a Highlander priest uh, that is a death rattle right, right Highlander priest would I play it in that me personally, probably not. But if you are running a Highlander Highlander Priest deck that is more focused on minions, then I could see you running it. Um, in Wild, there might be some Highlander Priest decks that might make use of it. But for the most part, the Highlander decks are way more focused on using their spells for control rather than using their spells to buff their minions. And even if there is a spell to, if there's a spell to buff their minions, it's normally something like Velen's Chosen in Wild. And in that, if that's the case, again, I don't think an unidentified elixir gets used. So I, I think this is a niche choice in niche versions of Highlander decks. But in general, I don't think many priests are going to play this. So now, if anything, we get to move to. This is one of those things to where, like, when I heard about it, I'm like, okay, this is interesting. But at the same time, it was going, hmm. So, we move into the Spellstone. 
area. And the first one we get to is Lesser Jasper Spellstone. One cost, deal two damage to a minion, gain three armor to upgrade. Now, as far as this upgrade goes, you meet the condition, you get to upgrade it. The second upgrade is you get to deal four damage, and it's a regular Jasper Spellstone. Still costs one, and if you, again, gain three armor, you upgrade it to its final form, which is Greater Jasper Spellstone. Again, still costs one, and you deal six damage to a minion. Ay, 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 ay. Like, I don't know where to fall on this. Because it's just one of those things where it's like, okay, I can play the Druid Death Knight. It's easy peasy lemon squeezy to be able for me to just gain three armor a turn. To be able to upgrade this left, right, and center. Or, you know, if I just say screw it, I gain eight armor. I think should work with something like Feral Rage. Yeah. So, it's like, eh. But I'm just like, I don't know what I want to do with this, because it's just like, I deal X damage, depending on where this spellstone lands, to a minion. Okay? That's great! It's something that Druid didn't have, really, as far as, like, you know, board control went. Woohoo! But it's a minion. I have what I would personally say better, you know, targets when I look at something like Wrath and Swipe. And, like, I get where you're trying to come from here as far as, you know, giving Druids more ability to be able to remove minions, or at least be able to, you know, target the board with this sort of spell stone. So it's just like, ah, Bulb, here, this is where I just go, here, I'm dropping this in your lap and you just go. Well, let me first clarify a few things on spell stones. Number one, each class is going to get a spell stone. Number two, I'm not sure whether you clarified it or not, but uh, in the parentheses, in order to upgrade it, it has to be something that uh, you basically do it while this is in your hand. I think that was that that was no duh. Um, as for this card, I think it's fair. I think it's playable, um, especially if you can get it to its largest size. Now, other than the Death Knight, you're gonna have to rely on on certain spells, which means that. If you're going to look at this, if you're going to play this, and you don't have the Death Knight, you probably want the Death Knight at least one of those spells, or you're going to hold this back for later, for, sorry, for later on in the game. And, you know, six damage is pretty solid. It's going to remove most of the minions in the game, so it can really remove something problematic. Um, and it, for one, for one, uh, for one... Uh, for one mana, it's not bad. Now, we do have to keep Skulking Geist in mind. Yep. So that's gonna that's one of the big ticks against it, especially no matter what the Druid deck you're playing playing in. Especially since you're looking at playing this late game, the chances of this this getting removed by a Geist is incredibly high. So this is a very high risk reward card right now. Um. After rotation, this may see greater play, but, you know, I think there'll be some people experimenting with it, but I think that if you're keeping Geist in mind, and if you're worried, it just may be better to stick with Ultimate Infestation than to stick with greater, than to experiment with, with, the, spell, with the Jasper Spellstone, because of the Geist threat. Uh, once Jade's rotate into Wild... Guys still might be around, but you can probably breathe more of a sigh of relief because that's one of the major things they're really uh, targeting at the moment. And there's going to be a lot of major guys targets that are going to be rotating out uh, at the time of rotation, so we probably might see some relaxation 
of guys. So this is one of those cards I think is good. I just don't think it's good right now. I think you want to wait until after rotation, see what we're going to get at, uh, get, get at the beginning of next year, and then consider running it. Uh, because uh, hoping that the... Uh, that the chance of guys will be much lower, which I think it will be. So I think this is not a card you want to you want to play right now. I think you wait at least uh, until after rotation, and then maybe try it. Yeah. And the only one last counter I want to kind of throw in the direction would be um, it was after the nerfs that happened in Knights of the Frozen Throne, where Druid was basically the king. That we saw a lot of skulking guys. And after those nerfs happened, you saw skulking guys really just fall off the face of the map. So, I could say you could be safe if you would want to experiment with the Jasper Stone. But, of course, like Bob said, be wary, be mindful. Yeah. Well, we always knew that Skulking Guys wouldn't stick around as a tech card, because I think people realize that it's not a, it's not the Jade Killer. It really isn't. Um, but my point is that you are going to be far safer if you wait until after rotation than using it now, because there's more of a chance of people using Geist now than there probably will be later on. Okay, and finally, the last card we're going to discuss in this video is the uh, Spellstone for Shaman, which is the Sapphire Spellstone. And the lesser version, it's a 7-cost it's a no matter but what, and then the lesser version is summon, summons one copy of a friendly minion. In order to upgrade it, you need to overload three, three mana crystals. Uh, in its regular version, it summons two, copy, two copies of a friendly minion. And then finally, in its greater version, it summons three copies of a friendly minion. I think this is very strong in Shaman. I think this is a very strong Shaman card. It costs a lot. Um, and if anything's going to be the downfall of this card, it's just going to be that it costs seven ma it's going to cost uh, seven mana, and it requires you to overload three mana crystals. But here's the thing. In its greater form, it's incredibly powerful and is worth the cost of emission. But I think even as re in its regular version, it... it it is worth seven mana. I don't think it's worth seven mana for for the lesser version, but I think if you can at least upgrade it once, it's definitely worth using. And especially if you can fully upgrade it, uh, it used on the right minion, this is this could be extremely powerful. Um, does Shaman use it right now? I don't know. I think Shaman, if any any spellstone that has been introduced, will find a home. I think it will probably be the Sapphire spellstone. I think Shaman probably will use this. Um, it's just going to be de depend on how, and I think it's going to take the right decks. We might see maybe one copy played in Shaman decks, and I don't think they're going to play two copies. And it might be saved for something like Evolve Shaman, see if you can get something really nice, and then use it. And if you hold on to it over the course of the game, you can definitely fully upgrade this. So I think this definitely is a card that maybe if you see it uh, in your opening uh, mulligan, you don't mulligan this. That way you can hold on to this and fully upgrade it over time and then play when the time is right. Or, you know, chances are, like I said, you're going to upgrade at least once, if not twice. I think Shaman will play this. Um, I think they'll play, probably play one copy, and uh, there might be some experimentation. We'll probably just have to see where this falls. I don't think it's going to make Shaman incredibly powerful. I think this is kind of like one of those finisher-type cards in certain shaman decks, so I think it will be played. I'm gonna be the guy on the other end on this one. Because it's just like... Like, don't get me wrong. I see the power of it. But keeping a seven cost spell that you're like, okay, I have to overload three mana crystals to be able to upgrade this. whoop de doo that's three mana crystals that you can't get back next turn. Now, right now, there are ways, thanks to Whispers of the Old Gods, to be able to knock down the fact that, you know, you overloaded three mana. So, 
you got that going for you. You've also got the Black Rock Mountain spell in Wild, so I could potentially see this getting a little bit of love in Wild. But I'm just like, ugh, that's the price of admission for this thing. Makes me just reach back and just go, Ree! I don't like it. Ah! And I'm running away because it's like, free mana, free overloaded mana every time to be able to upgrade it. And then... That's a lightning storm plus lightning bolt. That's done, that's done enough as it is. And plus, I mean, if anything, there's also the, uh, the taunt minion that you just drop out and you just go, boonk, there's your three right off the bat. Well, so, that's, that's the problem that I saw is that they used the taunt minion to, to show it off. And I don't think that, that any player who uses this is going to use that minion. I don't think that's how they're going to do it. Because, yeah. I, you know, I understand why you're apprehensive, why some players might be apprehensive, but my point is that when you really think about it, most Shaman players uh, will probably be able to pull this off quite easily. Lightning Storm is going to overload you for two. Most light Shaman players also pack in a Lightning Bolt. If you happen to Lightning Storm plus Lightning Bolt in the same turn, that's your three, that's your three mana. If you play a Volcano and this is in your hand, it automatically upgrades. So most of the control cards that Shaman is going to think about including will probably help you pull this off. And like I said, if you can upgrade this at least once, it's worth it. So I think Shaman's going to be able to pull this off most of the time. And if anything, I have the need to point out and let, you, let me remind you that Volcano overloads for two. I thought it overloaded for at least three. Nope. Overloads for two. Well, I think it'll be... A, I think... I don't think it's going to be, like, heavily played, but I do think that there will be some play, is what my point is. I think this... I think this is probably going to be easier to do than people think it will be. You still have to think about it, but I think, again, upgrade at least once, you're fine. Ah, uh, If anything, like, where would you realistically also see it? Like, are we looking at, uh... An Evolve Shaman? I mean, I could kind of see Evolve Shaman maybe including one copy, but I also don't think that they need to include it. Um, I think if you can get a decent mid-range Shaman going again, this wouldn't be a bad one because you're going to need some good control. Like I said, I think Evolve might be able to use it, but if I have to be honest, I don't think they will. Um, I think... Like I said, I think Shaman can use this. The The problem is that I think Shaman is at a point right now that there really isn't enough of a build to really be strong with this card. I think we need to see more more support for more support for that type of deck, and I don't think re we really have it since the last rotation. I think Shaman just kind of felt all of their old fun cards kind of fade away, and they've kind of been aimless except for Evolve since then. So, if they can get themselves back into order, maybe. And like I said, I think that the common sh most uh, minion, de uh, I think most shaman decks can probably pull this off. It's just the fact that I just don't think they have the right builds, or they're really going to want to use it. But I do think they could. And I think we may see this pop up every once in a while as a as a choice. We will most certainly see. Yeah. It's basically one of those things I'm going, I don't think this is meta-defining by no stretch, but will it see play? I think w it will see play every now and then. I think it might be a, I think it might be a card that some people might, might, might experiment with, it, and I think that certain minion-heavy shaman decks might realize that they might be able to pull off that overload upgrade at least once. Consistent, I'm saying consistently be able to pull it off once, uh, if not twice. And I think given what Shaman typically packs as far as its control spells, I think if they realize this, they might actually... that those The people who realize this might think about including this in certain builds. And like I said, if you can, pull, if you can just upgrade it once, it's worth the cost of a mission on the right minion. And that's the key there, the right minion. Yeah, because you don't want to, you know, oh look, totem... I just rolled. No, oh, you're gonna use it on like something big and powerful. Back. And Evolve Shaman, yeah. I think, has has the most 
uh, space to do that because they can create some really powerful things. But again, they're going to have to think, I'm going to have to hold on to this for long stretches of time. So the big, the big strategic point to really think about is if you're going to use this card, it's going to be when do I want to have it in my hand and how long do, am I willing to use this. This is a finisher card. This is not something you're going to just throw out and play. This is a card you want to use to finish the game. Or at least set up to finish the game the next turn, maybe get a better, better evolve. And if anything, with that, Bob, are you wanting to send us out on this one, or you want me to? Uh, you, you go ahead and send us out. You brought us in. That's fair enough. So if anything, that was at least eight of the cards that were announced. We've still got six more to go. They did say that there was an a... November 20th, they will actually do... They'll actually do car start card reveals, so we have two that, weeks. Yep, that's what I was getting to. I was just trying to make sure I found my words for it. But we've got six more cards to discuss. I think Bob and I will discuss what we want to do with those six cards. If we want to hold on to them until then, big. We'll, we'll do it or next week because there is a card I think is going to give make us spend some time. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking at it next, and I'm just going. Oh, I want to. Talk about you! <laughs> so if anything, as always, if you guys agree, you disagree, talk about it! Let's just open up that discussion. If you like what we do, give us a like, subscribe, we're gonna be putting out more of this stuff. We will definitely see you next time.